Welcome to Busan! Welcome back to another episode of our Korean Diary series. This is episode 3 and in this video we are going to Busan. For those of you who are new here, hello, wishing you a warm welcome. My name is Chloe and I went on my first ever overseas trip with my family to our motherland South Korea and I thought I'd share our journey with you here. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be uploading every weekend documenting what we got up to in our South Korea trip. And make sure to watch until the end because you'll see some really surprising footage of, yeah, well, I won't say anything. You have to watch to the end to find out what goes down. Anyway, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Whoa. Yay. What would you like? This is day three of our trip and this is where our sister Rebecca joins us. Beck left Australia a day later than us. Right? A lot of people who are watching our vlogs were asking, where's Beck? Why is one missing? And so to answer all your questions, can we do a cheers? Charles, 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 Charles. Oh, well, that's a fucking long duck, bro. All right, let's go. Charles. It's all the same drink. Here we are, this is all five of us. We are still missing one very important sibling, Erin, back in Sydney. If you're watching this, Erin, big shout out. We missed you and the trip was definitely not the same without you. Not gonna lie guys, this was probably one of the most chaotic checkout experiences that I've ever had. The Airbnb host came earlier than our checkout time which was a little bit strange and in a whole rush I accidentally asked the driver to take us to the wrong station and paid double what I was meant to but hey, we made it to Seoul Station anyway. This yeah. Oh, that's good. This is where we catch the wrong train to Busan. Long story short, Michael and dad dispersed from our group to get some cash out from the bank and they were on a rush coming back to the train station. To give you guys a bit of context, the KTX is very different from the traditional Korean railway station. This is like the equivalent to a bullet train in Japan. You have to book in advance. It's a little more expensive because you were traveling long distances and this train goes bloody fast. So we had all booked our seat tickets and we all jumped on the train, still separated from dad and Michael. It took us five minutes to realize that someone else was in our seats and we were in fact on the wrong train to Busan. Nothing can capture the stress of traveling mistakes like you feel in the moment. But I guess that's inevitable when you're traveling. It's going to be chaotic and these memories are the memories that you look back at and laugh at, right? Mountains, guys. Five minutes. Five minutes. In all honesty, I could have easily left out all of our commute chaos, but I wanted to keep it in because I really feel like traveling is not just about going from one destination to another, but embracing the whole chaotic ride to get there. Whether it's travel or life, it's literally not just about going from A to B, it's about the whole ride. And what we learn along the way, including the absolute chaotic bliss that sometimes you don't plan for. Why does this come out and feel so familiar? In our last Korea vlog episode, I shared a little bit about my experience growing up as an immigrant kid and since posting last week, I've actually been able to have a few conversations with a few different people about having that shared immigrant experience. I just was amazed that there are so many people out there who've experienced something really similar about growing up cross-culturally. Thank you for sharing your experience and I want to keep hearing from you guys, so let me know if there's anything in this video that you resonate with. As soon as we got off the train in Busan, the air felt different. It just felt fresh and I don't know if it's because we finally escaped the chaos of all our commuting, but it felt really good to land. Hello. 
Lego blocks. But well, in like reality, the back of a truck, yo. you can fit probably a couple hundred bodies in there. If one of those is equivalent to like one truck, yo. <laughs> Ba Dong Sok is arguably Korea's most famous actor in the history of Maybe Forever. I personally didn't recognize his name, but as soon as I did a Google search, I was like 100%, I know this guy. It was actually pretty surreal. We met him when the elevator doors opened and he had like six bodyguards around him and he actually invited us onto the elevator, but because I was tired and I didn't know who it was and the elevator looked full, I was like, nah, we'll pass, you guys go down. And that's when we realized, man, that was Ba Dong Sok. Take my shoes off. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Do you know who he is? I don't, I'm not the only person that doesn't know who he is. He's pretty famous. He's really famous. Take mine. I don't need one. I'm actually a little bit starstruck. Yeah. I thought I was in a fucking movie, bro. Shit, and you actually saw him. Yeah. You actually saw him. Crazy, bro. Yeah, and Dave was like, bro, oh, yeah, yeah. Like he knew him type of shit. What did he say? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Back to him, bro. You know what I'm saying? What a moment. Crazy, bro. What a little. Yeah, he, 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 the flavor is really beautiful. Just the rice. Yeah, bro, I'm totally. It's pretty good. It's 
is our first full day in Busan. It's 28 degrees and it's almost the middle of winter, so it's kind of nice. Hannah and I went to the hot springs and I hope you like my fake bangs. I think today is going to be a bit of a chill day. Yeah, so maybe I'll show you instead of telling you about it. Bye. Dad gave us all a little bit of pocket money, so we decided to go shopping. Beck did her research and found that there was a Lotte outlet nearby. And if you guys are in Hyundai or in Busan, we would actually recommend that you go here because they have the stock standard, all your designer stores and all of that. But they also have really, really cool retail shops that you can only find in Korea, which I loved. One thing that really surprised me about Korea was how cheap their public transport and even the taxis and Ubers are. The bus there cost us probably like a dollar and it was like a 30 minute bus ride. It's insane. Another thing that really surprised me was that in my mind Kodak is like a camera, disposable camera film shop but in Korea it's a full label with clothes, with hats. It was kind of weird but really really cool. Last few days, but that's okay. After a quick rest, we headed out to dinner. We had dad's friend who hosted us and mom had mentioned the night before that she loves seafood but apart from mom, dad and myself, no one else in our family seeks out seafood. So this dinner was interesting. I want to try that. A couple of my siblings are actually allergic to shellfish and so this was a bit of a risky dinner. Oh, oh no, I'm not eating it. See, this I cannot <laughs> eat. I can't eat this one. I don't think I can fucking eat I eat seafood. It's it's not alive, is it? It's okay. alive. No, it's dead. Yeah. It's nah. muscle memory. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the cookie. Double more. 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 But surprisingly enough, the two siblings who don't like seafood actually love this weird octopus thing. They were not alive, just a disclaimer. Chopstick? It just won't stop moving. Dana, you gonna you mash the neighbor? This is. You gonna mash stop? Just stop moving back. No, no, no. No, I think get one of those. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it. Grab it with your hands, yo. I think it's too spicy for it. <laughs> This, the thing is just sticking on the... Sorry. Yeah, you don't want You at least try one. But I don't think I can... I like, I can't. It smells rank. It smells like fucking Sydney fish market. Hey, Sydney fish market is pretty up there. Yeah, but it smells rank. It does smell right. Mm. It's actually I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> That's fucking delicious. This tastes better than this. Wow. It goes crazy with that fucking chuda. It's a skeleton. It looks like kingfish, but I don't know. Is it kingfish? After a chaotic dinner, we went out to go see a little more of Heon there. If you're gonna jump on a cruise in Korea, you need to bring your passport. So that's a cheeky little tip for you. And that's probably good practice in travel anyway, just always having your passport on you at all times. 
and apologies in advance about the shaky camera. The boat was, uh, it wasn't the most smooth sailing, but it was a very good time. Hey, I'm proud of Heonde was so beautiful. The beach was probably a very similar size to say Bondi Beach and Maruba Beach, but the different thing about Heonde is that even if we were like on the water and it was vast, there were huge buildings and cityscapes everywhere in the backdrop of the water, but also mountains and I think that's one thing that I was so surprised about South Korea was that there were just mountains in every single suburb we went to in utter awe of how two things can just coexist so seamlessly big ass man-made structures and then just mother nature just gobsmacking This is, this is mad. She's saying I'm wrong. This is crazy, bro. Oh. <laughs> If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of what we get up to in next week's vlog when we go to the Kamchon Cultural Village and visit my grandma in Iksan, which is a country town a little further away. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever been to Busan before and if you've ever visited Iksan before, which is, I think it would be rare, but let me know if you have. Thanks again, guys, for watching and we'll see you next week. Bad du Soleil, Bad du Soleil, Bad du Soleil.